Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and the solution transcript, there will be a link in the description of this video. This week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week was to formulate a proof for Fermat's Little Theorem, which is that if you have, which is that a to the power of p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p, where p is a prime number, and uh, a and p are relatively prime. And to do this, we are going to use this set of numbers, which is the multiples of a, um, from the multiple from 1 to p minus 1. And we are also going to use these two um, almost lemmas, which we're going to prove right now. And the first one is this, which is that if you have numbers, natural numbers b, c, and d, if b and d and c and d are relatively prime, that means the product b, c is relatively prime to d. And this is a pretty easy one to prove. So if, let's say we have b, we can break it up into its prime factors, which we can write out as b1, times b2, times uh, b3, so on, all the way up to some bk, depending on how many uh, prime factors it has. And we can do the same thing for c, and we can do the same thing for d. And now, since b and d are relatively prime, that means that um, none of these prime factors are going to be equal to any of these prime factors. And the same thing with c and d being relatively prime. None of these prime factors are going to be equal to any of these prime factors, or else the greatest common factor would not be 1. Therefore, we can write out b times c is just the prime factors of b, times the prime factors of c, uh, and since these are all the prime factors, and we already know that none of these prime factors are equal to these prime factors, uh, we know that the greatest common factor of the product of b and c and d is 1, and therefore b and c is relatively, b times c is relatively prime to d. And we've proven this one, which is good. And from here, we can, or from the first lemma, we can state one consequence of it, which is that none of these numbers are going to be congruent to 0 mod p. And this is because, um, so let's say we have some number, natural number g, which is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to p minus 1. So it's just one of these factors times a. Um, so we have this. And let's say that one of these factors is congruent to 0 mod p, or sorry is congruent to 0 mod p. Therefore, um, this means that p would divide evenly into g times a, which means that the greatest common factor of p and g times a is equal to p. But since p is a prime number, and g is a natural number less than p. Therefore, g is necessarily relatively prime to p. a, by our definition, is relatively prime to p. And therefore, by this lemma, the greatest common factor of p and g times a should be equal to 1. So this can't be true, which means that this can't be true. So we've shown that none of these factors are congruent to 0, uh, 
modulo p. Now we have to prove the second lemma right here, which is another pretty straightforward one to prove. It is that none of these factors are congruent to each other um, mod p. And so if we take two natural numbers x and y, um, greater than or equal to 1, and uh, less than or equal to p minus 1, such that x and y are not equal to each other, and we assume that uh, there are two factors that are congruent to each other. By the rules of modular arithmetic, since a and p are relatively prime, we can divide both sides by a. Therefore, we have x is congruent to y mod p. But since x and y are both less than p, this means that x is equal to y, which is a contradiction since we stated that x can't be equal to y, and in this, this particular case, x is less than y. So this can't be true, which means that that can't be true. And so we've proven this. And therefore, going back to these factors again, what we've shown is that if you take these, um, if you take these factors, and you take them modulo p, you must get the set back of the natural numbers up to p minus 1. Since none of these are congruent to each other, and none of them are congruent to 0, there are p minus 1 spots and p minus 1 numbers. And therefore, it may not be, these may not reduce to this in this order, but uh, you will get these numbers. Now, to finish off this proof, all we have to do is consider um, all of these factors multiplied together. And as we've shown, these are, that would be congruent to all the natural numbers up to p minus 1 multiplied together. And this is modulo p. Therefore, we can factor out all these a's. Since there are p minus 1 of them, you get a to the p minus 1. I'll write this in uh, factorial form. This is p minus 1 factorial. Um, on the right side is also p minus 1 factorial. Um, and since none of the numbers less than p, none of the natural numbers less than p, are, um, sorry, since all of the numbers, natural numbers less than p, are relatively prime to p, we can divide them all out. And when we do that, we get that a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. And that is, the, is one proof for, for Maslow theorem. Uh, there are many proofs out there. Um, so if you have another one, uh, send it to us, and we'll check it out. And that is this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. To view more videos like this, you can click right there. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click right there. To visit the centerofmath.org, you can click right there. And if you're on a mobile device, there is an I in the top right-hand corner of the screen with all of the same links. Thank you very much.